everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bookmark. I'm your hostess, Sherry Joy. I am half of the Digicast, and this is book four, part one, The Maid's Diary by Lorith and White. Okay, so I am halfway through the book, and this book is 376 pages. It was published on March 1st, 2023. Again, it's The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White, and it is, I'm not really sure if it's a psychological thriller or if it's just like a thriller, um, but before I continue, I just want to say this is full on spoilers. So if you are interested in reading the book, I do suggest that you read the book first and then come back and listen to the show. Um, or just listen to the show. But before you do that, please take a moment to like and subscribe um, with, you know, below. I thank you for your support. We thank you for your support. The Digicast thanks you for your continued support. Um, okay, so The Maid's Diary. The book starts off at a jump. Um, this is actually the first time I've read anything by this author. I This book was suggested to me um, by my reading <laughs> by my Kindle reading, I guess you could say the advertisements. I think I'm like one of few people that I know of anyway, or maybe one of all the people that I know of that actually appreciate the um, ads on my Kindle because the ads on my Kindle actually show me books that are recommended, you know, to me based off of my reading. Now, I'm not sure if that happens because I've been reading for so long I've had it for so long or if it just is a coincidence but I appreciate the ads because it does give me an idea of what I want to read next or what I want to add to my reading list and I do have a reading list that I am working on um my goal as I, I said in um episode one or book one my goal is 50 books this year I'm actually on book 19 so I'm hoping to get to my halfway mark by the end of June. So let's see how it goes. All right, Maid's Diary. Um, as I said, the book opens with like a woof. So we are in Vancouver, Vancouver, and um, we have a male and a female in a car. And they are pulling into what seems like it's an abandoned or an old, I don't know, like mill or something with a silo at the edge of the city maybe or somewhere in the city um at the edge of like a river because there's this major bridge over it and they're kind of like in the underpass of the bridge but there is water nearby and um we find out that it's a um legislator assembly member and a top city lawyer that are having an affair so they the the um, flirting and everything and googly eyes and whatnot have been happening all day. And then they're finally at the end of the day. And this isn't the first time, you know, this affair has been going on for quite some time as far as what we can understand. Um, so, and they like to have a fair and dangerous, like secretive areas. So they're under this, like they're in this underpass of uh, right on the edge of this water and they're getting hot and heavy and they're getting ready to, you know, they actually start the procedure of, you know, <laughs> intercourse. We're all adults here, I think, I hope. Um, and they hear something. Well, the, the female hears something and she's like, hold on. Or he's hold on or something. And they see this car, these two cars come pulling up. And they're kind of under the bridge in like a, a dark area. So they're, they can't really be seen. Um, but they see these two cars pull up and one of the, one, the people come out of, they jump out of the cars and they, <coughs> excuse me, and they open up the trunk and they actually pull out like a carpet, a rolled up carpet. And they dump that into the river. And actually they, I, I'm sorry, I'm confusing info and I apologize. They don't open the trunk. They open the car and they pull out a rolled up carpet and they dump that in the river. And then they take the car that one of the cars that they were driving, which is a yellow Subaru Crosstrek, and they 
push that they put that in a neutral and then they you know do their thing and they push that into the river so these two people have witnessed that and they're not saying a single solitary word because if they are caught they're they they will be they feel like they'll be killed um so they're quiet and they keep still until the scene you know ends and they drive off and the chapter ends with them saying can't call 911 if we call 911 and report what we've seen we'll be exposed to the affair that we're having and we're important people of the city and we cannot have our family lives and our lives in general and our you know careers at jeopardy for reporting the crime that they just saw so then the next chapter we meet we don't know who's in the trunk of the car actually uh we know it's a female and she's been badly beaten she is in the trunk of a car we don't know which car uh and she's in major pain she says that her shoulders ribs belly and between her thighs hurt and she can taste her own blood and she's going in and out of consciousness and she can hear people inside of the car kind of talking she's getting like every other word um and they're like basically you can gather what they're saying like they're trying to figure out what to do with her and where do you know where can what what now what's next and all this stuff and we're only assuming that she was dumped um that's who was dumped into the river and she was still in the back of the trunk when that happened so we meet then we meet our characters there's a lot of characters in this book a lot so the maid's diary is literally the maid and we're reading her diary and you know when it, it it's the, the the book is written in third person but the diary portion the maid's portion is written in her perspective so it's the book is written as i said in third person except for her chapters um so the maid the maid her name is kit and she is, um, she's, for, um, sorry, she is Scandinavian <laughs> and she works for this maid service, this, um, Holly maid service, which is, uh, a person named Holly actually owns the service and she's been working for this maid service for a while. We learned that kit her car is the yellow subaru cross trek and it has the insignia on the side holly maids and she um you know she goes from house to house cleaning and stuff that's what she does that's what she enjoys doing uh, she actually takes it a little far she learns about people i've, I've said in a previous you know previous episode that maids they just they kind of you know get close and personal in your house because they're cleaning your stuff so they learn a lot but kit actually snoops around she enjoys trying on people's clothes and pretending that she's you know them for the time that she's there and she really really gets into some risky things and her breast her best friend's name is boone and he tells her that she's reckless and she's getting out of control and she needs to like stop but she can't help it it's in her nature to be nosy um, so this car that, you know, this murder that we're assuming is a murder, you know, the cars got dumped or whatever. It is Halloween night, 2019. And we then meet Beulah Brown. Beulah Brown is your, she's in a wheelchair. She's confined to a wheelchair. She owns her home and she is confined to like the top floor of her, I don't know, townhouse condo apartment building whole house so she's on you know she's confined to the top floor of her house basically and her house is across the street from what they call the glass house and the glass house is where something brutal started um so miss beulah she is um her son lives with her her son's name is horton and beulah is nosy <laughs> I, I mean there's really no other way to say it she even has binoculars now she has a killer no pun view of you know from her room where she actually has a kitchenette and everything in her room um but she has a killer view of the neighborhood or at least her street and of the river and the bridge 
uh, that we that I talked about earlier. So she actually sees, you know, she sees Kit come and go t- t- enough to the point where as Kit knows to look up to the window and wave and say hi to her and all this other stuff. So she's very much in the window a lot, very, very often. We don't really know how old she is. Uh, she has cancer. We don't know how old she is and we don't know how long she has, but she's, she's there. Um, so she witnesses, well, she, she goes to sleep and she doesn't really witness, but she goes to sleep and she wakes up, uh, to these, like, to a scream and she's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So she, you know, somehow gets herself together to go to, you know, her wheelchair. She gets her wheelchair and and she's able to wheel over to the window with her binoculars and, She doesn't really see much from what we know at this point. She just calls 911 and she says that something's going on. Um, The next day, November 1st, 2019, the police come and they go to the glass house and they find what looks like a murder scene. I mean, it's a crime scene at this point because there is no actual murder, um, you know, that they can tell or there aren't any bodies, I should say. So outside of the glass house, they find a bouquet of flowers and a pie from a oh, flowers from like a mom and pop shop and a pie from a mom and pop shop type place that, you know, makes specializes in pies, uh, kind of like only. And then they go inside and there's just blood everywhere. In the bedroom, they said it's the worst crime scene they've seen. The blood is on the ceiling, on the walls, on the, soaked into the mattress, on the floor. They find a sneaker, uh, a white sneaker with a uh, like a pink stripe, which we know from reading that Kit wears that with her uniform. She wears those sneakers, a pair of like blue pants with a drawstring and a pink polo of some sort. And, and so they also find a note with the flowers it says, you know, it says, thanks for everything, or it has a little note on there. And then it says from Daisy and the note, we don't really understand what it means as of yet. Um, and it just says from Daisy and that's all that they find. So the, the police want to talk to Miss Beulah to find out what she actually saw. So the police officer is a detective. It's a team of detectives as we meet Mallory and her partner is, um, his last is Benoit, Detective Benoit, who is, um, not from here. He's from Africa and he speaks Swahili and he is interesting. (laughs) Um, they go and they talk to, they go over to the house and they knock on the door and Horton answers and he's kind of like the gatekeeper. Oh, my mom always, my mom is always calling the police. They come and nothing, nothing ever happens. Usually it's a cat or, you know, somebody walking their dog or, you know, she saw somebody steal somebody's car or try to steal somebody's car. And it was just somebody fumbling with their keys. So she's like calling 911, the police all the time because she's always in the window and she's always seeing things. But this time it's like actually a crime. So they explained to him, like, I need to talk to your mother because this is an actual crime that we found. So she knows something. So detective Mallory goes upstairs to talk to Miss Beulah and detective Benoit stays downstairs to talk to Horton. Now we don't hear the conversation he has with Horton, but we do, or read the conversation, but we do find out what happens with Beulah. So Beulah actually says that she saw you know, she saw Kit come that day to clean the house, confirm that her car is that yellow cross track with the um, Holly made logo on it. She confirms what she was wearing. She always wears her hair in like Princess Layla um, um, buns, the two on her head. And she actually saw the couple, this Daisy and her husband, which I haven't explained them yet, but she actually sees them two show up to the house with the flowers and the pie. Now, Daisy and John, last name Rittenberg, they recently just moved back to Vancouver. 
John is an Olympian skier, downhill skier, and he was in the nine in the I want to say ninety two or two thousand two um, Olympics. And since then, he's very very famous. He's known for his speed. And since then, he's been running resorts, and he's been working with his wife Daisy. Her father owns resorts, Screw Resorts. So he's been working within that company. And the father promised him a COO opportunity at a new ski resort that they're opening in Van in the Vancouver area. So they moved back to Vancouver. Daisy is very pregnant. She's eight months pregnant. And they're together and they're married. And they live maybe like a block or two away in what they call the Rose Cottage. Now, they are friends, or at least Daisy is friends, with the owners of the Glass House. The Glass House owners are Vanessa and Haruto, and Vanessa is also pregnant. So, Miss Beulah saw Daisy and John arrive and didn't see anything else except for when she woke up. She heard the screams and she heard a car zip, you know, down the street and the neighbor, a neighbor did confirm around the same time that Beulah heard the car zipping. The neighbor confirmed that there was a car that zoomed out of there, but he didn't think of it because people speed, you know, all the time. So that's what we have with that part. Now we kind of, it's like a flashback. It's a flashback book as well. So the detectives and Beulah are all in the present day, the day after Halloween that the, you know, that the supposed murder took place. And then the um, past tense of the book is 13 days before the murder, which is, um, on the murder is on Halloween, October 31st, 2019. So we're going back and forth. Um, so then, so to flashback, we learn, we, we go to John and we learn a little bit about John and he is, he feels like he's in a dull marriage. He loves his wife. He's trying to do the right thing for his wife and for his baby that's on the way. Um, he actually has dinner with someone else in the company. His name is Henry, who's very, very close to his father-in-law and Henry is giving him a warning like hey I know that you came all the way to Vancouver you were promised the COO position but we're it was promised to somebody else and that other person is um of uh, he's he's also he's African and he's a snowboarder <laughs> so John is like John is like a snowboarder. Like you want a snowboarder to run the ski resort. And Henry is like a black sn a snowboarder. You know, like that's the, the emphasis that I'm getting as I'm reading. Because Henry starts talking about you got kicked out for affirmative action. So they want somebody black in there just for affirmative action and all this other stuff. So... John is like upset. He doesn't see color. He sees snowboarder and he sees that he's getting screwed out of this position that should have been his because it's his father-in-law. So he feels lied to, he gets upset. Meanwhile, while they're having dinner, he's making, he's making eye contact with somebody that's in the bar slash restaurant. It's a hotel restaurant, some brunette that's across the the way um and we find out her name is Mia Mia Ritter and she's um she buys him a drink like she sends a drink over after Henry right so after um Henry Lee like he's he's talking about how intriguing this woman is so after Henry leaves he's like super like infuriated and um this woman sends him over a drink of what he was already drinking and she's like he says he makes eye contact with her. He's like, you know, do you want to sit with me? She's like, no. So he gets up and he goes over to her and he was like, thank you for the drink. And she was like, oh, it wasn't a solicitation. I just, you looked familiar. And then I realized who you were. You're John Rittenberg. You're the skier from the Olympics. You're the famous Olympian known for speed. And I admired you, you know, all through high school or college or whatever. And 
she ends up she's a banker and he's like more intrigued with her they have this conversation and you can you can tell that they're attracted to one another but he wants to do the right thing his wife is calling daisy's calling and he ignores the call like twice then finally on the third time you know she's like all right i should be i should get going i have an early morning so i'm gonna go and he's like no just wait a few minutes she's like no i really need to go so she starts to leave he answers his wife and he's like yeah i'll be home. the guy he lies to his wife he says the uh just when i was leaving the guys from work came by and they wanted me to stay and they kind of convinced me to stay i'll be home soon hangs up with her and then he runs out of the bar out of the restaurant bar and he finds her and she you know she's like around the corner she's gone so he goes back in and he notices to pay the tab and the waiter waitress is like the waitress is like oh sh your tab has been taken care of and he's like by who and then she says by the 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 woman who bought you the drink took care of the whole tab even the steak meal that he had with henry the whole entire tab was taken care of and he notices that in cliche lipstick written on a napkin her information of um how to get in touch with her and he's like contemplating it he's like no i'm gonna behave i have a baby on the way and i don't need this but i'll keep it for safekeeping but no he decides against it Lo little does he know he's actually being watched um we see some photographer snapping you know we don't see we read about a photographer snapping photos of him and it's like hmm okay why is he you know being private investigated so that's a little bit about john um oh also well yeah that's a little bit about john so daisy his wife as i said she's eight months pregnant she has an instagram account and she is like all about the likes and loves she's miss instagram she's you know staging photos of her family life of, of her her everything like of her crib she's just like <laughs> beyond like i'm i'm gen x i guess this is a millennial thing maybe it's a gen z thing but i think gen z is too young so it's a, mil a mil millennial thing i believe um she's just taking photos and staging photos of beautiful life and perfect life and she's doing like these long hashtags and there's like five to ten hashtags in one posting and she's got pictures of her and John like all over the world, traveling, skiing, all these things. And it's like, ugh, you know, get a life. What else do you do? Um, <clears throat> so John actually hates that. He thinks that, you know, she's she's flaunting too much, giving too much information because apparently they had a stalker a couple of years ago um before they moved to vancouver and so now she's still at the instagram thing doing the insta thing and hashtagging this and hashtagging that so john is really upset he doesn't like it because he's like anybody you know we could be stalked again this can happen again you need to cut it out and then he also thinks that she's leading a fake life with him like she makes a beautiful dinner for him place setting and everything and he's like you didn't do this for me you did this for Instagram and she hesitates and he's like, see, and then he gets up and walks away. So he's upset about that. Um, but also what Daisy isn't saying is that she's being, she is being stalked. She's getting these notes um, left inside of her car, left on her car, sent to her, so, you know, a photograph sent to her, text messages of Chuck, of Chucky with you know the knife and die 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 daisy die fake daisy you know and your baby's gonna die die baby die and it's like oh my god like what in the world so she's freaked out but she's not telling john and it's like okay why are you not telling your husband who knows and uh then we get to vanessa and Haruto. i'm h-u-r-t-o i'm gonna say Haruto or herto maybe it's herto i don't know uh, Vanessa pregnant very pregnant we not we are not sure how far along she is but she's very very pregnant um as I said they're the glass house owners Vanessa and Daisy meet for lunch at this you know cafe and of course Daisy's Instagramming it away and I guess Vanessa loses track of time because her husband comes in 
Hurdo comes in and grabs her and is like, did you forget? Like, he is upset. You forgot about our appointment. He gr literally grabs her and is like, we need to go. And she's like, oh, Hurdo, this is my friend Daisy. Daisy, this is my husband Hurdo. And it was like, nice to meet you. Let's go. And they leave. And Daisy's like dumbfounded. Like, what was that? So later Daisy tells her husband, is like, you know, they have something going on. He's a little, seems like he's a little controlling. Um, I want you to meet them. I kind of want you to see this for yourself. Let's have dinner with them. And then that's where they have, that's, I guess, that's when they have dinner at the glass house. Um, we haven't really gotten to the filler of that yet because we're still 13 days. So I, it is my prediction that that's, you know, the, the dinner that they have at the glass house and where all the bad things happen. Um, and then back to the maid. So the maid snoops around. She, she ends, she actually ends up being a cleaner at the Rittenberg house. Um, and she's like freaked out when she realizes where she are, like where she is. She's like, she sees his like big photos on the wall, murals or whatever on the wall of him. She's like, oh my God, it's John Rittenberg. And she's like freezes. And then she starts having like a panic attack. And she immediately wants to call Holly and say, I can't clean this house. But then she's like, I can get through this. I can clean this house. And she's like thinking about her therapy sessions and she's going through the motions of calming herself down. She, you know, she's like, I can do this. And also it'll be good because I can snoop. So she, she also, she has an Instagram account as well, but her Instagram account is a fake account. She's faking all her stuff. She's taking pictures with her and her best friend Boone and like love life with her best friend and just, you know, making shit up and, so she goes to, she's snooping around the house and she finds the, the baby room. What is it called? The nursery. <laughs> and she's like, she takes a picture in front of the nursery expecting, you know, as if it's her baby. So she's like really fake in that way, but she calls it her fake Instagram account and she knows what she's doing. So she's taking this, these photos and she's posting it on Instagram and it is a, a special, we find out that the mobile, the mobile the baby mobile or m mobile at the top of the crib um, is was specially sent to Daisy from like a follower. And here we go with Kit taking the pictures in front of it, posting it and stuff. So I'm assuming that's going to come back and haunt her. But she actually is able to get into John's computer because he left it open. Not, not password protected or anything like that. It's just open. So she finds out like she downloads his his um what's it called <laughs> his date book basically his calendar and he can she can follow him everywhere he goes um so she knows where he's going to be at every exact moment next thing we know she's calling this she finds an article about a woman who accused him of rape so he she contacts this woman and she, her name is Casey and she's like, Hey, um, this happened to me too. And you know, I believe you, I believe your story and I know that you had a baby and I just, what happened to the baby? And she's like, I can't say anything because I signed, uh, I signed a non, -dis non disclosed order where I can't describe it. I can't explain anything because she got money. She got hush money basically. And so she doesn't want to tell her anything. And kid is like, oh, it's okay. You know, you can trust me. And you know, she squeezes out information that, yeah, there was a baby. Won't say what happened to the baby. But she basically, so then Casey is like, are you okay? You know, and Kit's like, yeah, I'm okay. But I want to talk to you more. Can we meet? And she's like, I can't. So we know something bad happened. And it wasn't John that paid her off. She's like, no, it wasn't the husband and I'm going to get in trouble. Don't ever, don't repeat this because I'm not supposed to even be saying it. But I guess this can be said because this wasn't in the disclosure, just the order. Um, it wasn't John who paid me. It was Daisy. Daisy paid me to be quiet and to do what I had to, and to do what needed to be done with the baby. And we're like, okay, what happened to the baby? So that's where we are. Um, that's kind of it, except for the, the part where Daisy, uh, I, I don't really know, like, that's where we are. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. I'm halfway, I'm halfway through 
my predictions, I don't know. This book is all over the place. There's so many characters. So I don't really have a prediction per se at this moment, except for I think that the maid was in the trunk of the of the car that got dumped. And I think one of the pregnant women, maybe Daisy, was wrapped in the, well, in the carpet. But who knows? Because the police do go to see John present day and John is like all messed up. He's, you know, he's got scratches on him. He's got, he's tired. He's totally drunk. And they're like wanting to talk, the police are wanting to talk to him because they find out that there is a connection with them and the glass house owners. And he doesn't want to talk to them. And they're like, well, where's your wife? You know, can we talk to Daisy? And he's like, she's gone. I haven't talked to her. She's gone. She left me. And we're like, what? We are, And so they're like really prying. Benoit and Mallory are really prying to try to get information. He's like, I'm not giving you any more information. I told you she's gone. I'm not telling you anything else. They don't believe him. And, you know, he slams the door. He basically says, if you need anything else, you need to contact my lawyer or get a warrant or whatever. And he slams the door in their face. So they go over to the car. But his car is an Audi and his car has mud on the license plate and it looks dirty. So they're taking photos of it. I guess it's, you know, on public property. So they're taking photos of it and stuff. And they think that something weird is happening. Something's going on. So I think John had something to do with his wife's disappearance. I do not think she left. I think she's dead. I think maybe Vanessa. I think Herdo did something to Vanessa. We I don't know enough about them. Like, it doesn't really... We don't really know anything about them except for that one scene. Um, so it, this could go anyway. But I do think the maid is dead. <laughs> And I think that the maid is stalking Daisy or Daisy is sending the stalking stuff to herself for self-pity. And someone's lying. I mean, and I think it's both of them, the maid and Daisy. And I think this Casey or Cassie girl, I think that she comes back into play. And it, it could go, she could be playing the revenge part. I don't know. Who knows? So we'll find out in the second part of the book, The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White. I want to thank everybody for listening and following um, us and just being with us on this Digi and being, you know, this Digicast journey and being part of the Digicast world. Um, you can follow us on facebook the digicast we are on instagram as the digicast we are on spotify as the digicast we have a flipboard page just search for the digicast there we have a blog it's the digicast.substack.com you can also um if you use the link in the description to our Amazon affiliate page, you can see all the awesome things that we like and you can um, check that out. But please, please follow us, subscribe to us and like this video and others um, on YouTube. YouTube, we are the Digicast One. We truly appreciate your follows, your likes, your subscriptions, your recommendations and just sharing our information, you know, our page with your friends and family. And again, thank you for listening. This is book four, part one of The Maid's Diary by Laura Ann White. I am your host of Sherry's Joy, half of the Digicast. And until part two, love the world.